Hello everyone and welcome to Dragon Age Inquisition. At long last we have arrived at the most recent Dragon Age game after spending the last four and a half to five-ish months going through all of Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2 and what a treat they have been. I've really enjoyed exploring this world, getting to know the characters, going through the story and yeah we are now here at the most recent entry. So at the end of Dragon Age 2 a war was about to start between the Templars and the Mages, and I have imported that save over to this game, or I will be able to, via the Dragon Age Keep. I've set up everything on the Keep as well as I possibly can. I think everything is correct and as it should be. Uh, I did make one change, which is that apparently in Dragon Age 2, I should have got a quest with Nathaniel from Dragon Age Awakening, but due to some kind of bug, that didn't show up. And I got a different quest instead. So the thing I changed was that I said I did meet Nathaniel and I did do his quest and it's all good there. So I don't know if that will have any impact on this game. But uh, as that's what should have happened, I figured it would be right to change it back so that that is what did happen in this uh, world state that I'll be importing. I also uh, watched Varric's little 20 second like bridge thing between the events of DA2 and this. So after that game ended, the mages voted for their own independence. They decided to remove themselves from the Chantry and the Templars. The Templars didn't like that very much. They destroyed two circles and uh, a war obviously began in earnest at that point. The Chantry, as leaders of the Templars and the Divine, ordered the Templars to stand down because the war was getting pretty bad. Uh, but the Templars refused and broke off and became their own thing. So they're no longer under Chantry control. They are now doing their own thing. And yeah, war is raging across the land. So as a last ditch effort, the Divine has called a peace summit here uh, to try and try and somehow, some way, mend relations between these two factions. Uh, I'm going to take a wild guess, but that isn't going to go great. <laughs> and uh, I presume that the game is going to be about the war between the Mages and Templars ongoing. And uh, yeah, we will see where that takes us. But that is where things lie as we begin here, Dragon Age Inquisition. So let's get into it. I'm very excited to see where things end off. And of course, this game is now eight years old, I think. So man, if you if you played this at launch, you've been waiting a long time for the sequel coming out, presumably next year. By the time it comes out, it'll probably be like nine years. So I'm quite glad I'll only have to wait like one-ish. <laughs> but uh, yeah, here we go. Oh, this is the uh, Game of the Year edition, by the way, so I have every piece of DLC installed, apart from the multiplayer expansions, because I figured I'm not going to be doing multiplayer stuff, so that's fine. But everything else is in and ready to go. Let's do it. Uh... Okay, that didn't look good. <laughs> that, in fact, look looks bad. Is Anders here? <laughs> Did Anders turn up to the peace summit? That's, that's an Anders moment right there. Okay, interesting. Well... <laughs> we are certainly starting off, uh, that's, that's a more explosive beginning than I was expecting. All right, so this is, uh, like Dragon Age Origins, you can choose what character you want to make. You're not, uh, just pushed into a human, which is cool. Uh, so let us read all the descriptions, shall we? Get a little refresher. Uh, oh, it looks like you can change Dudor woman here as well. Very nice, okay. Uh, humans are the most numerous and powerful race in Thedas. They are also the most divided politically and seem to thirst for conflict. Human characters receive a bonus ability point at the start of the game. Okay, cool. Elf. Elves are, are a historically oppressed people, distinguishable by their live frames and pointed ears. Though most survive in the poorest fringes of human cities, others live as nomads known as the Dalish. Elves receive a bonus of 25% to ranged defense. Cool, that's quite a bit. 25%, that is a decent amount. Uh, dwarf. Dwarves are short, stocky, and most spend their entire lives underground. Those exiled to the surface are often merchants or smugglers. Because dwarves have no connection to the Fade, they cannot be mages, but receive a 25% bonus to magic defense. Okay. And look what we've got here. Kunari. Okay. The Kunari are a race of horned giants who follow a strict religious text known as the Kun. Those who have abandoned its principles are known as Talvashoth and often work as mercenaries. Canari characters get a bonus 10% physical damage resistance. Okay, I'm guessing most damage you take in this game is physical then. Because uh, 10% is quite a lot less than 25, so I'm guessing if it was 25 it would be too OP. Because that's like the majority of damage you take, I assume. Okay, so what do we want to be? And what gender do we want to be? That is a pretty big choice. So, 
Uh, we've been human in Dragon Age Origins, and then we were human in Dragon Age 2. So I'm going to go ahead and not be human in this game. I chose it in Origins because I wanted to see how humans and humanity in general, like, fit into this fantasy world. Uh, and then I didn't realize that we'd also be made to be human in DA2, so I might have chosen differently in Origins if I'd known that, but it is what it is. So let's do something different this time. So I'm kind of tempted to be Canari. A little bit. Uh... But I think I'm more drawn to the elves, especially because we, of course, know that the next game is going to be called Dreadwolf. And that's an elven god. So I'm wondering if I play as an elf, maybe I'll have a little bit of extra insight into what's going on there, potentially. So I feel like that would be pretty cool. Uh, so I'll go elf. And then do I want to go dude or woman? Uh, I think I will go woman. I really did enjoy playing as Marion in Dragon Age 2. That was great. So let's go with elf female. Cool, cool. Okay, now we get to select our class. So, what have we got? We've got Rogue Dual Wield. Rogues are fighters who rely on speed and agility rather than heavy armor, using skill and an advantageous position on the battlefield to deal incredible damage. They may get up close and personal with daggers or strike from a distance with arrows. Uh, Rogue Archer. Rogues are fighters who rely on speed... Wait, is that the same? Oh, that's... Okay, it's the same. Right. It's just picking your starting stuff, I guess. Um, warrior, two-handed. Warriors are frontline combatants, able to withstand incredible punishment in heavy armor. They are proficient in the use of two-handed weapons like mauls and great swords, but may combine a smaller weapon with a shield for added defense. And then same description for that. Yep, cool, cool. Uh, and mage. Mages channel magical power into spells capable of a wide range of effects, from debilitating opponents, protecting allies, or unleashing devastating elemental energy. Those who wield magic are widely feared for their abilities, and their rebellion against Chantry control has left the land in chaos. Alright. What do we want to play as then? Well, in Origins we did Mage, and in 2 we did Rogue. So I guess logic would follow that in 3 we will be Warrior. However, Warrior just isn't really my vibe. So although that is the one class we haven't actually played yet, I'm not going to play Warrior in this. So... That brings it down to Rogue or Mage. I did really enjoy playing Rogue in 2. I did really enjoy... Well, I enjoyed Summer playing <laughs> Mage in Origins. Combat definitely wasn't my favourite part of Origins, that's for sure. But, uh... Mm, that's a toughie, because I really do... I lean towards the Mage vibe more heavily. Also, I guess this game is about a Mage Templar war, so you might get some additional dialogue, potentially, if you are, like, actually innately part of that by virtue of being a mage. So that actually might be pretty interesting. And I do really like the mage vibe as a whole. So you know what? Let's do that. We are going back to our roots as a mage. Uh, difficulty. What have we got? We've got casual, we've got normal, hard, nightmare, and custom. Huh. Playing with trials on will increase your challenge, but you will also earn unique equipment. I don't think I'm going to play with trials on. Let's just stick with what we, what we like. Normal, Normal experience. Sounds good to me. Man, these cards are really cool. I really like the art on these cards. These are very pretty. That is some gorgeous art. Uh, right. Is this a little summary of us? Enslaved long ago by humans, most elves still live as, as second-class citizens within human cities. Elves who reject this life are known as the Dalish, nomadic wanderers who strive to keep the ancient elven religion and traditions alive. You grew up in the wilderness a member of the Lavellan Dalish clan, an apprentice to its leader and guide, the Keeper. Have we heard of Lavellan before? I don't think so, but you never know, because, like, obviously there was an Origins in Origin that then became, like, Meryl's Hole group in, uh, in DA2 and stuff, so you never know, but I don't believe I've heard of them. Uh, the clan wandered the Northern Free Marches, and you had little need to interact with humans until the Keeper sent you to the Chantry's Conclave as a spy. Ah, what happened there, she said, would impact not only the Dalish, but indeed all elves. She could not have known how right she was. Ooh, like that. We are there as a spy. Okay. Sounds good to me. Let's do it. Ah, yes. Okay, good. Would you like to import a custom world state? Yes, I would. Uh, okay, that is saying we did it on the 7th of August. Uh, is that, does that sound about right? Yes, I think that's right. Uh, half eight. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure that will be correct. Uh, confirm. Yes. Cool. Okay. I, mean, I guess it doesn't give us, like, a, a summary of our things, so I just have to hope it's the right one, but I only made one, so it, it must be. It must be right. Okay. Cool. Here we go.
So it looks like the Peace Summit just exploded. So yeah, that's quite a way to start off. That is, uh... <laughs> I guess this is the smoke from said explosion. Is this gonna be us? Actually, do we get to customize ourselves? We chose who we were, but we didn't get to do any customization. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yep, now we get to do it. I should have known. <laughs> the moment I say something, that's when it'll come up. Cool. Okay, um, so... What do we want to do? Uh... You know what? I actually am feeling like doing a good amount of customization here, but I'm sure people don't want to watch me flick through these menus for like half an hour or something. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut ahead until I've decided on the look of my dude. And, uh, yeah, we will carry on from there. So I will be right back in a sec with a finished character. All right, there we have it. I have just spent a good amount of time changing all of the options, going through everything, trying to find my perfect character. I got really into it this time. I really like the way they've set up, like, it's instead of just, like, sliders, which most games is just sliders, they've got a lot of, lot of options here with, like, sort of graph things where you're moving the point around the square to change things and I really like that that was a really good way of doing it so uh, yeah good customization options and this is my character I'm very happy with her and uh, let's accept changes name your character Alana is the name that it gives us and so Alana we shall be what on earth is that Run, run for your life. What is going on here? <laughs> Tell me why we shouldn't kill you now. Oh, it's the Seeker. The conclave is destroyed. Everyone who attended is dead, except for you. Huh. <laughs> okay, well, that doesn't look great for me then, does it? Uh, use left stick and A. Okay, same as before. Uh, I feel like she thinks that I did it. Okay, cool. Uh, right, let's go with... You think I did it. You think I'm responsible? Explain this. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I don't know what that is or how it got there. You're lying. We need her, Cassandra. Wait, is that Leliana? I think that might be Leliana. Oh, snap. Some dialogues give you the opportunity to respond emotionally to situations. When these opportunities appear, special icons will highlight the emotion tied to the response. Crying, anger, confusion, or the tough guy approach, I guess. Um, 
All right, let's go for the. Let's go for the. Well, I mean, they're not going to respond well to that. They're just going to be like, "Yeah, right." Uh, let's show. Let's show some empathy. All those people. I can't believe it. All those people. Dead. Do you remember what happened? How it totally began? is. It's Leliana. Oh I shit! I remember running. Things were chasing me, and then. A woman? A woman? She reached out to me, but then... Go to the forward camp, Liliana. I will take her to the rift. What did happen? It... will be easier to show you. It's not great. It the breach. It's a massive rift into the world of demons that grows larger with each passing hour. It's not the only such rift, just the largest. All were caused by the explosion at the Conclave. An explosion can do that? This one did. Unless we act, the breach may grow until it swallows the world. Right, we're connected to it. Somehow. We survived and are also connected to that thing? That really does not look good for us. spreads, and it is killing you. It may be the key to stopping this, but there isn't much time. Investigate. How could it stop this? You say it may be the key. To doing what? Closing the breach. Whether that's possible is something we shall discover shortly. It is our only chance, however. And yours. You still think I'm guilty? You still think I did this? To myself? Not intentionally. Something clearly went wrong. And if I'm not responsible? Someone is. And you are our only suspect. You wish to prove your innocence? This is the only way. Alright. Uh, if I can help, I will. I understand. Then... I'll do what I can. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. But uh, if you could take these cuffs off, that would be a good start. <laughs> they have decided your guilt. They need it. The people of Haven mourn our most holy, divine Justinia, head of the Chantry. The conclave was hers. It was a chance. Oh, she was there. Between mages and Templars. Was that who we reached she out to? Brought their leaders together. Now they are dead. We lash out like the sky, but we must think beyond ourselves, as she did. Until the breach is sealed. There will be a trial. I can promise no more. Come. It is not far. Where are you taking me? Your mark must be tested on something smaller than the breach. Okay. Uh, the Wrath of Heaven. Get to the rift with Cassandra. Hi, Cassandra. We went through the entirety of DA2 with Varric and her talking, and we never found out her name, I don't think. Uh, right, left stick to move, right stick to control the camera, indeed. Oh my goodness, look at this, this is gorgeous! What on earth? Oh man. Oh yeah, oh I am very in immediately to this. This is a very good beginning. Uh, also, let's have a look at this. What have we got? Character record, load, inventory, codex. See, <laughs> you know me, I like reading me some codex, and I'm pretty sure I just saw a whole bunch of things pop up. Uh... Characters. What's a world worth saving without the colourful characters who call it home? This is everything essential about key players helping or hindering the Inquisition. Oh, this 
this is a neat way of doing it. Okay. I like this. Oh, I like this a lot. One of my key issues with uh, the codex of previous games has been how there's just so much information and it's all just in a list and so it's been hard to pass. This seems like a much better way of doing it with more gorgeous card art as well. I really like this card art. Cassandra Pentagast. Okay, this is going to be the person. This is the person we're with. This is the Seeker. Lord Seeker Lucius. I am fully aware of the intent behind your predecessor's declaration. Lord Seeker Lambert pried the Templars away from Chantry control and led them into an assault upon all mages for reasons you both find justified. I, however, am uncertain when the Seekers of Truth went from guarding against injustice to perpetrating it. If you truly believe that is not the case, I suggest you look out a window at the chaos this war has caused and ask yourself if Thedas will recover even if you are victorious. I remain at Divine Justinia's right hand and will stay there even if you brand me traitor. I'm sorry, but there is too much at stake to swerve from the path we willingly followed at the Chantry's foundation. From a letter by Seeker Cassandra to Lord Seeker Lucius. Okay, cool. I like Cassandra. Very nice. Right, what is this? Divine Justinia the Fifth. Formerly the Rev revered mother D Dorothea, Dor Dorothea of Orlais, Divine Justinia V rose to power after the death of Divine Beatrix III in the year 934 of the Dragon Age. Little is known of Dorothea's background before she joined the Chantry as an, as an initiate, but she proved to be a liberal and daring thinker, willing to take a former bard and lay sister, Leliana, as a close advisor. Yeah, we saw that in DA2. Leliana became like right hand of the Divine. And now she's here with us. Oh my goodness. Cool. Very cool. A headstrong devotion to her own agenda and rumoured support of the Mage Rebellion earned her no small dislike from the powerful priests long used to controlling access to the Divine. In the year 940 of the Dragon Age, Divine Justinia called a summit, intending to negotiate a truce between the Mage Rebellion and the Templars splintered from the Chantry. The Divine Conclave was held at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. Wait, like, Temple of Sacred Ashes like Urn of Sacred Ashes? The most holy place in Thedas. Before a resolution could be reached, a cataclysmic explosion destroyed the Conclave, consumed the Temple, rent the sky, and shattered the world's hopes for peace. Divine Justinia V perished in the Temple of Sacred Ashes, the Chantry flounders, leaderless, in the wake of her death, and its fate grows increasingly uncertain. If order is not restored to Thedas, Justini V might be remembered as the Chantry's final divine. Oh man, okay, what have we got down here? Lavellan of the Dalish. Right, this is my clan, right? The Dalish are elves who refuse to live in human cities where their people are exploited, having few rights. They choose to eke out an independent existence in the forests, attempting to keep the last remnants of their ancient culture alive. Alana is from Clan Lavellan, a group of Dalish who migrate around the perpetually feuding Free Marches. Alana's people travel along the borders of each city-state's territory, where Free March rulers will be less inclined to attack them for fear of accidentally provoking neighbouring cities. Smart. Alana manifested a talent for magic as a child. The clan's leader, Keeper Deshana... Uh... <laughs> uh... Deshana Istimathoriel? Lavellan taught her how to control and hone her new powers. Alana grew into a capable mage, far away from the eyes of Templars and mage circles. When tension between the two factions erupted into warfare, spilling into the countryside, Clan Lavellan was forced to pick up and move. Alana's keeper sent her to spy on the Conclave at Haven, as the outcome might determine the fate of her own clan. After the explosion that killed the Divine, Alana was the only survivor at the Temple of Sacred Ashes. Rumours that the mysterious mark on her hand is a sign of the Maker's favour were spread by those who claim they saw the Divine Prophet Andraste herself Lead Lavellan out of the Fade. Oh, is that? Huh. Is that who we saw? Who we reached out to? I was thinking it was the Divine. But if the Divine's dead, maybe not. Wait. Led Lavellan out of the Fade? So we got, we were like thrown into the Fade? And then, huh. And then when we reached out to them, they got us out of it? Okay, that, yeah, I guess that makes sense with what we saw. Huh, cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. Right, groups. Let's have a look here. The Dalish Elves. Uh, in time, the human empires will crumble. We have seen it happen countless times. Until then, we wait. We keep to the wild borderlands. We raise Hala and build Aravels and present a moving target to the humans around us. We try to keep hold of the old ways to relearn what was forgotten. One thing I like about this is that in DA2, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the codex things were identical to DAO. I'm pretty sure, like, even though we know about the Dalish Elves, I'm pretty sure this is completely rewritten. So I do want to read these now. Uh, we call to the ancient gods, although they do not answer and have not heard us since before the fall of Arlathan, so that one day they might remember us. 
Elganan, the eldest of the sun, and he who overthrew his father. Mithal, the protector. Fen'Harel, the dread wolf. Andruel, the huntress. Falon Din, the friend of the dead. Dirthaman, the keeper of secrets. Gilanain, the mother of Hala. June, the master of crafts. And Silaes, the hearthkeeper. We gather every ten years for the Arl Arlath Ven to retell the ancient stories and keep them alive. For when the human kingdoms are gone, we must be ready to teach the others what it means to be elves. As told by Gisharel, keeper of the Ralaferin clan. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, history. I keep trying to use the D-pad. The D-pad doesn't, <laughs> doesn't let me go up and down. You have to use the analog stick for some reason. Uh, I'm going to keep doing that because I've used the D-pad in both games previous to this to move around. Uh, the Conclave. It has been a year of little more than chaos. Yes, the mages voted to dissolve the Circle of Magi, but I will point out this vote came only after increased restrictions were placed on them following the unfortunate events in Kirkwall. Because, you know, when some random dude blows up the Chantry, of course, it is the Circle's fault. Even though he wasn't part of any Circle. What other choice did they have? Yes, the Templar Order abandoned their duties and elected to pursue the mages to bring them back in line. But after a thousand years in which their sole role was the mages' keepers, what else could one expect? Could expect them to be better. They envisioned the war over quickly, a single battle that would see the mages resolve crumble, after which they would meekly return to confinement. That did not happen. Shocker. This conflict could drag on forever, with advantage on neither side. Both Templars and mages see this, and thus they have agreed to come to the Conclave. This is our chance. Words need to be said which have not been said. A compromise must be reached, because there is no other choice. I believe this with all my heart. I am not without fault in all this. Perhaps I pushed too hard for reform, or not hard enough. The Maker has seen fit to give me another chance. I will not squander it. The Temple of Sacred Ashes is where together we will make history, and with luck, we will be remembered kindly for it. From the Journals of Divine Justinia. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Didn't go quite how she hoped. Okay, uh, magic. Let's have a look-see here. Uh, the Breach. What does it mean to pierce the veil, that which separates our world from the realm of dreams and demons? For the average man and woman, it is a frightening thought to consider just how fragile this separation actually is. The veil is not a physical curtain, not a structure limited to a particular place. It is everywhere. It is in their home, in the streets where they walk, in farmers' fields, as well as remote mountain vales. At any moment, it could be torn to shreds, allowing demons and other horrors to flood into our world like water through a burst dam. Known law tells us that small rifts can be sealed, but what about a large one? What if some catastrophic magical event created a rift so large and horrific it weakened the integrity of the veil as a whole? Such a breach would threaten our entire world, turning concerns about occasional demonic intrusion into a charming anecdote compared to the monsters we would then face. If there is anything to be done, any reason we should look at magic with fear, it is for that possibility more than any other. From The True Threat of Magic by Lady Seeker Alandra Vale. Ha! <laughs> Her surname's Vale. And she's writing about the veil. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, tutorials. Uh, which is just status effects. Okay, uh, is there anything I need to know here? Debilitating effects. Disabled includes frozen, paralyzed, stunned, and asleep. They can't move, can't take any action, limited duration, or maybe ends when taking damage. Uh, taking damage over time. Know what that is. Chilled, move and attack more slowly. Confused, attack its own allies. Knocked down. Knocked down, panicked, uh, stops attacking, moves randomly, shocked, magical resistance reduced. Uh, swarmed? The target is covered in bees. <laughs> what? It takes ongoing damage and has a chance to become panicked. Interesting. Sundered, armors reduced, taunted, targets that character, weakened, vulnerable, that makes sense. Uh, beneficial effects. Barrier, a magical effect that protects the target from damage. Incoming attacks must deplete the barrier before the target loses health. Okay. Uh... Guard, a type of combat training that protects the target from damage. Sounds like barrier. Incoming attacks must deplete the guard before the target loses health. That sounds exactly like barrier. What? Uh, resistance, greater resistance, immunity. Okay, cool. That is everything. Thank you for joining me on our first of many Codex reading sessions. I think this is a infinitely better way that they've laid it out. They've got the little star to show what is new. They've got so much more on screen at once, so you don't have to scroll down and you think you're missing stuff. And yeah, this is... Uh, this is a very, very good way of doing the codex. Glad that it's got a solid update here. Okay, uh, you know what? Let's just pop a, our first cheeky save. And then here we go, the wrath of heaven. Uh, can I talk to you at all or? No.
You go, man. All right. Is there anything like to loot around here, or are we just? Open the gate. We are heading into the valley. The thing on the compass is that a seeker symbol? The thing on the compass indicates your quest destination. I wonder if it's that. <laughs> Access the quest map from the hero menu by pressing that. Uh, quest map. Where be quest map? Uh, journal? Ah, the wrath of heaven. Yes, get to the rift. Cool. Okay, Inquisitor's path. As the Inqui as the Inquisition's power grows, it gains enemies in equal measure. It will take an iron will to bring Thedas back from the brink of chaos, but that is precisely what must be done. Cool. Are you letting me lead? I feel like you should be leading. Man, this is so pretty. It's the end of the world. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I love it. What a great start. Whoa, that's not good. The pulses are coming faster now. The larger the breach grows, the more rifts appear, the more demons we face. How did I survive the blast? They said you stepped out of a rift, then fell unconscious. They say a woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. Wonder why she didn't come out too. Everything farther in the valley was laid waste, including the temple of sacred ashes. Oof. I suppose you'll see soon enough. <laughs> did we, uh, did, did any of the sacred ashes themselves survive? Or is that it? Is, is Andraste's ashes just done? Because, uh, they were pretty useful. They were pretty useful ashes. I just feel so imposing. They've never... Oh my god. God damn. Oh, hello. Stay behind me. Not good. Not good. Grab that. Sup. <laughs> okay, how do we how do we do in this game? Press right trigger to attack. Okay, that's new. Uh what what are my things down in the bottom left? Well, let's just press right trigger to attack and see how this goes. Oh, wait, you have to Okay, hold to continuously attack. Cool. Wow, I've got a lot of range. That's very nice. Level one. I'll look at what abilities and stuff I've got later. It's over. Drop your weapon now. Bro, I just helped you. I don't need a staff. All right, I'll disarm. You need to trust me. I need this weapon. I'm not sure what... I'm not sure what the... What is the hand symbol with a star in it? What does that imply? I'm not sure... The previous ones were pretty clear what it was saying, but... I'll say it and see what she says, because I don't know what that is actually conferring with that picture. Do you really think I need a staff to be dangerous? Ah, Cassandra disapproves. To reassure me? That's I not good. Used my magic on you yet. You're right. You don't need a staff, but you should have one. I cannot protect you. I should remember you agreed to come willingly. Man, I really like how my how my character looks. Take these potions. Make a nose what we will face. Okay, left Where bumper and select that to consume a potion and heal the controlled character. Or fighting. We are on our own for now. Right, okay, we've got... Oh, I'm pretty sure it was it was right stick to navigate around before, wasn't it? Now it's left stick, okay. Uh, also, wasn't it the right bumper that opened this menu before? And now it's left bumper? <laughs> I'm going to get confused by this. Okay, we've got hold position. I've got to remember that. Uh, we've got attack tie, we've got disengage. Hold position would have been really good 
uh, if I'd realized I had that earlier in DA2. So I'm going to remember that I have it this time. We don't need a heal right now, though, so that's fine. Uh, is there anything on right bumper? There is not anything on right bumper. Can I look at what my stuff is? Can I see in the inventory? No, that's just weapons. Uh, okay. I can't see... I want to see what my... I guess it would be on character record. But I can't go into that. Because I have more abilities, although... I can't make them show up now. But I had a couple of, of abilities that I didn't want to press, just in case. Like, I didn't know what they did yet, but... Okay, is there any point, like, trying to loot anything at the moment? Or is that not... Doesn't seem like that's a thing so far. Okay. Onwards. Oh, now it is. Loot. Uh, Templar Scribe Cowl. Oh, thank God. It goes back to showing us what, uh, what, like, ratings and stuff it has in the menu. Okay. Uh, so if I take that, can I then put it on? Uh, select inventory in the hero menu to examine your loot and equip items. Okay, cool. Uh, so we've got new armor. We can now equip that for additional stuff, although it looks terrible. Uh, can we hide it? There must be... There was a way to hide it in, in DA2. So I'm guessing if we go into the options... Uh, display? Display helmets? Nope, that ain't it. Uh, gameplay? Difficulty? Friendly fire? Persistent gore? Pause while targeting AoEs? Trials? Oh, these are... Enemies always scale to be the least... To be at least the same level as the Inquisitor. No thanks. <laughs> uh, walk softly. Rest easy. Uh, so these are all just like off. These are all just make the game harder, right? No thanks. Uh, is there really no... Oh, there we go. Hide helmet. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, confirm. Yes. Fantastic. Okay. I did put it on though, right? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Good! Get in the hang of it. Get in the hang of it. Man, does she really have to, like, bend down and pick it up every time? Uh... Abilities. Abilities consume mana and stamina for powerful combat effects. Most abilities require time to pass before reuse. Indeed. Uh, X is chain lightning. Damage and shock multiple foes, increasing the magic damage they take. Very nice. Uh, press right stick to lock the camera on a target. Okay. And then right stick again to change targets. Cool, cool. And then what is my Y? Oh, very nice. Hello. Die. Die. Oh, hello. I was trying to sprint. Searching reveals nearby loot, codex entries, and crafting nodes. Cool. So I've got like a scan. Okay. Well, I'm going to be fucking hitting the left stick in about a hundred times a fucking minute. You not got anything? Nope, okay. Hello. Up on the hill. It's attacked from a distance. All right. I like the uh I like the burst of power it does after a little bit. Like, you fire off a few normal ones, and then they do a big one. Spirit Essence. Tier 1 rare rune material. Alright. Uh, anything hiding down here from me? Yup. Man, I feel like the whole kneeling down thing might get annoying. Uh... Gathering resources. Gather herbs and metals out in the wild and use them to craft upgrades to your gear and potions. Explore and find as many varieties as you can. Alright. So far, I'd say this is a 10 out of 10 intro apart from the kneeling down every time you want to loot someone. Because <laughs> there's a... I mean, if past games are anything to go by, you loot a lot. So... 
yeah, we'll see how that feels. Why can't I... There we go. I, it seems like I can't use... Oh, God. Oh, flash fire. Ignite and panic, did that say? I'm trying to tell why it seems like I can't use the lightning immediately followed by the fire. Not entirely sure, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. So, as far as I can tell, there's no sprint. Like, yeah, it takes a little bit before... Oh, it, oh it's because it uses all my mana, right. I. It's because... I see, I see. The mana bar is the bar ticking around the edge this time. Okay. I get ya. I get ya. Cool. Okay. Makes sense. I do just want to check. Is there... Uh, yeah, there's a control thing. Is there a... Oh, it doesn't actually... I thought it was going to show me the controls. I really want to check if there's a sprint. <laughs> But I guess not. Okay. Trying to think of any button I may not have pressed that would be sprint. Doesn't seem like it. Okay, that's fine. There wasn't one in DA2. Anything down here? Oh, wait, I've got to jump. Huh. Ba 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 bum. You can hear the fighting. Who's fighting? You'll see soon. We must help them. Indeed. Howdy, friends. What is that? Is that a boy? yours okay <laughs> what did he he held my hand up and closed the thing okay uh so i can help at least this is good for something whatever magic opened the breach in the sky also placed that mark upon your hand i theorized the mark might be able to close the rifts that have opened in the breach's wake and it seems i was correct okay fellow mage Maybe then it could also close the breach itself possibly it seems you hold the key to our salvation. Good to know. Here it I is! We'd be deep in demons forever. Hey, man! This is quite the reunion. Kethris, rogue, storyteller, and occasionally unwelcome tag along. Man, that's great. In in Dragon Age 2, it was like we hardly saw anyone from Dragon Age Origins. Got Anders. And uh that was more or less it <laughs> and then uh we've already we're already seeing a bunch of people this is fantastic we've seen leliana we've seen obviously we didn't know cassandra particularly we just saw her in the in the framing device of da2 but still that's the character and now varic this is great loving this you're with the chantry are you with the chantry or <laughs> was that a serious question technically i'm a prisoner just like yeah that makes sense <laughs> i brought you here to tell your story to the divine 
Clearly, that is no longer necessary. Yet, here I am. Lucky for you, considering current events. Pleased to meet you. It's good to meet you, Varric. You may reconsider that stance. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll become great friends in the valley, Chuckles. Absolutely not. Your help is appreciated, Varric, but... Have you been in the valley lately, Seeker? Your soldiers aren't in control anymore. You need me. Ugh. Hey, she My knows he's is right. Solus, if there are to be introductions, I am pleased to see you still live. He means I kept that mark from killing you while you slept. Ah, appreciate it. You know about the mark? You seem to know a great deal about it all. Like you, Solus is an apostate. Based. Technically, all mages are now apostates, Cassandra. My True. troubles have allowed <laughs> me to learn much of the Fade. Far beyond the experience of any circle mage. I came to offer whatever help I can give with the breach. If it is not closed, we are all doomed regardless of origin. Uh, that's commendable. That's a commendable attitude. Merely a sensible one. Although, sense appears to be in short supply right now. Cassandra, you should know. The magic involved here is unlike any I have seen. Your prisoner is a mage, but I find it difficult to imagine any mage having such power. Understood. We must get to the forward camp quickly. Well... Bianca's excited. <laughs> Does my dude not get to ask who Bianca is? Because she wouldn't know. This I know. Down the bank. Codex Both unlocked in. Solus. Codex I'm unlocked Varric. I'll be moving quickly in just a moment, lads. Do not worry. Do not worry. Uh, here we go. Solus. Cassandra, I understand our first order of business must be to investigate this bizarre breach in the sky and protect people from the demons descending. While my search continues, I wish to draw your attention to a new arrival at our camp, an elven apostate calling himself Solus. Solus entered the camp voluntarily, surrendering his staff to Chantry forces without protest. He is not Dalish, and says that he has never been part of the Circle, claiming instead to have studied magic peacefully on his own, particularly magic tied to the Fade. While I suspect you will be reluctant to accept the help of an apostate, Solus did come to us freely. Witnesses saw him in a nearby village at the time of the blast, so he was likely not responsible for what happened at the Conclave. However, he has described the effects of the breach in enough detail to convince me that he knows more about the Fade than anyone else present. Solus has requested permission to study the lone survivor and one of the smaller rifts in hopes of finding a way to seal the breach. He has correctly guessed that it is growing, and believes it will destroy the entire world unless we find a way to stop it. Unless you object, I will allow him his studies under proper observation, of course. Leliana! Oh, I didn't realise Leliana was writing that. Nice. And then, of course, we have our boy, Varric. There's power in stories. That's all history is. The best tales. The ones that last. Might as well be mine. Varric Tethras of the Dwarven Merchants Guild of Kirkwall is famous, or infamous, for two things. His books, and his association with the Champion of Kirkwall. After the Templars and Circles broke away from the Chantry, Divine Justinia V sent her agents to Kirkwall, where the roots of the war began, in search of answers. The Champion has long, held, has long since disappeared, but Varric had written a book on his friend's involvement in the destruction of the Kirkwall Chantry, and the left and right hands of the Divine located him with surprising ease. Oh, is Cassandra the left-handed Divine? Because Liliana's the right, right? Uh, they captured and interrogated him, then brought him to the Conclave to give his testimony to the Divine in person, but fate decreed that he would never meet her. Cool. Uh, crafting mats, elf fruit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and still continue to not read plant descriptions. Uh, right, what have we got here? Do, do, do. We have shade. It has often been su suggested that the only way for a demon to affect the world of the living is by possessing a living or once living body. But this is not always true. Indeed, a shade is one such creature, a demon in its true form, that is adapted to affect the world around it. My hypothesis is this. We already know that many demons became confused when they passed through the veil into our world. They are unable to tell the living from the dead, the very static nature of our universe being confusing to a creature that is accustomed to a physicality defined entirely by emotion and memory. Most demons seek to seize immediately upon anything they perceive as life, jealously attempting to possess it. But what of those that do not? What of those that encounter no life or fail to possess a body? What of those that are more cautious by their nature? These demons watch. They lurk. They envy. In time, such a demon will learn to drain energy from the psyche of those it encounters, just as, those it, just as it did in the Fade. Once it has drained enough, it has the power to manifest and will forever after be known as a Shade. Such a creature spurns possession. 
It instead floats as a shadow across its piece of land, preying upon the psyche of any who cross its path. Is it psyche or psyche? I never know. Uh, perhaps it believes itself still in the fade. There is evidence to believe this is so. Ha. Huh. Cool. And the wraith. Like wisps, wraiths are sometimes thought to be the remains of spirits or demons that have been destroyed. They cannot shape the fade around themselves, nor are they capable of mimicking forms they see in the minds of dreamers, as many weaker spirits do. Instead, they are the scavengers of the fade, dwelling in the shadows of stronger beings, feeding on scraps of thought and emotion. Cool. And that is everything. All right, onwards, onwards. Uh, we're going over there, I guess. Is there... Oh, hello. Acolyte Fire Staff. Is that better? It looks like you can't compare it in that thing, so... Uh, what's the compare button? Examine? Ah, I see. Uh, so the Fire Staff is... Has one more DPS. Uh, one more fire damage than that has cold damage. Uh, that has a barrier damage bonus. Not sure what that is. This has more willpower. Uh, so I guess we equip this. Right, yes, Acolyte Fire Staff equipped. Okay, cool. Um, right, moving on. Do, do, do anything up here that I could grab? Yep. Have a little kneel down to gra get that. Yoink. I can't believe we have a jump now. <laughs> Reach the forward camp. Okay, okay. Anything down here? Yep. Uh, nine gold and figurine of Mafrath the Betrayer. Sure. Is that something I can sell? To control other party members, press up and down. Glad you brought me now, Seeker. Bum bum bum. Can we get some high ground? Uh, press that to enter the tactical camera mode, which helps you better evaluate nearby enemies and plan your strategy. Oh. Okay. While in tactical camera, use left stick to scan the battlefield, right stick to cycle through targets, switch control between your party members, and press A to issue orders to move to a specific spot or attack a specific enemy. Hold right trigger to advance time while in tactical camera mode. Uh... Okay, so I can't, like, move over there. I can only move here. Defend? No, I don't want to defend. What? Uh... Varric defend? What? No, okay, I don't know how this works. Whatever. <laughs> let's not do this. Uh, let's just do normal combat. Oh, hi. Man, they really like going for me, huh? Uh, which way are we going? We're going over there, so anything up here? Yep. about down here. Gotta be thorough. Wait, unless this is the way to go. This isn't the way to go, is it? Wait, now I'm not sure, actually, because there is a whole load of stuff up here. Oh, no. <laughs> Which is the way to go? I should probably heal, actually. Unsure. Uh, can't get in there, it looks like. Oh, there's a little house over there. Can we go in the little house?
Yeah, we can. A silver bracelet, okay. Just to sell, I assume. Nothing more, okay. Ba ba bum. I really don't know which way I should be going right now. I want to go the not correct way, but it seems like they both maybe lead to the same place. I'm not sure. So, are you innocent? I don't remember what happened. That'll get you every time. Should have spun a story. That's what <laughs> you would have done. It's more believable and less prone to result in premature execution. Man, this is so cool. Just the scale of this is awesome. done. I hope Liliana made it through all this. She's resourceful, Seeker. We will see for ourselves at the forward camp. We're almost there. Okay, so this is going to the forward camp. So should I go back and check the other way? I'm gonna do it. There's a little bit of backtracking. I apologize, but I, I really want to check everything. I wish I had a sprint. I really wish I had a sprint. Okay, what is up here then? If this is not the forward camp, What be it? Okay, I feel like I... What? What? It, is there no way of me seeing what this ability actually does? Because it felt like that did nothing right then. Oh, I think it told me, right? It panics the enemy or something? <laughs> yeah, about that. A little bit of a spy. many roads in my time. Crossed paths with your people on more than one occasion. Oh, what is this? Oh, hello. You can respond to these kind of conversations. Uh, crossed paths. What do you mean by crossed paths? I mean that I offer to share knowledge, only to be attacked for no greater reason than their superstition. Can't you elves just play nice for once? Never. <laughs> Spirit essence. All right. Okay. So this was just a little, a little camp thing. Okay. Life ward amulet. Plus 50 life ward heal. When a blow is about to drop a character's health below zero, the amulet shatters and heals the character for the specified amount. Oh. That's cool. Don't mind if I diddly do. Oh, wait, I'm on her. Wait. No, take that off, then me, and then go. Okay. Cool. Uh, crafting materials. Uh, sure, not anything. I don't really need to know about these, do I? Valuables, these are just to sell. Okay, cool. Uh, right. And now we walk all the way back. <laughs> Fuck's sake. I wish I'd explored this first, but it is what it is. 
Time for some speedy running. Dun 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 dun, speedy run, speedy run. Dun 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 dun, speedy run, speedy run. We are going to be doing a fat, girthy, lengthy part one here. Because I am well aware that I spent a lot of time. Oh! My magic cannot stop your mark from growing further. For your sake, I suggest we hurry. I'm on my way. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time, like, reading the codex. I've spent a lot of time, like, not actually <laughs> playing. We, well, I mean, the the making a character bit I'll cut out, but a lot of a lot of menus and stuff. So, yeah, we're going to be doing a big fat part one here to make up for that. I already looted you guys, right? Yeah. Okay, here we are. This is new. We haven't been this far up before. Anything hiding back here at all? Nope. Fade rifts are caused by weaknesses in the veil. Disrupting a rift with your mark will cause damage to nearby demons. When all demons are dead, close the rift with your mark. Okay. Uh, the Herald? Am I the Herald? The Herald can use the mark to close the rift once all the demons it has spawned are dead. Oh, that's cool. Ao cheeky level. Level up. Your character is leveled up. That increases your health and stats automatically and awards you one ability point to use. Alana has reached level two. All right, sick. Open the hero menu. Select the character record to see the abilities screen. Okie doke. Uh, character record up the top here. Oh boy. Oh god, okay. <laughs> it's time to read a whole lot of abilities and spend even more time in the menu. Uh, spirit. Masters of this school of magic call upon spirits for protection as well as the essence of the fade itself. Their spells disrupt hostile magic, create defensive barriers, and even heal injuries. Okay. Storm. Masters of this school of magic call forth the power of thunder and lightning. Their spells paralyze foes and arc from one enemy to another. Okay, so we've already got one of these. Oh, hello. Uh, each ability tree contains active, upgrades, and passives. Each ability active have diamond shapes. They can be mapped to your hotbar. Uh, upgrades attached make it stronger. Passives have circular that are permanent boosts. Are there no hexagonals here that are like new f states that you can be in? Is it just active and passive now? Okay. Make it a little bit uh, simplified, I guess. Like, what were they called? Were they sustained? Sustained skills, I think they were called. Uh, when you have ability points, press A to learn a highlighted one. You can only learn abilities connected to the root of the ability tree or connected to an ability you've already learned. Okay. Uh, left stick to select abilities. A to learn. B to go back. Cool. Right. So the one we've got is Chain Lightning. You unleash a blast of lightning that shocks one target and arcs to nearby enemies. Five meter distance. Hits four times for 250% weapon damage. Okay. Shocks them for 8 seconds with a cooldown of 8 seconds and costs 50 mana. Okay. Which, and 50 mana is like a third-ish. Heading towards a half-ish of our mana, it looks like. Cool. Uh, right. So before we actually look at any more, let's look at the other potentials. Inferno, masters of this school of magic, dominate the battlefield with unrelenting fire. Enemies who survive the initial blast are driven mad with terror or burned to death in unquenchable flames. And the one we've got here is flash fire. You ignite an enemy with searing pain and send them fleeing in panic. 300% weapon damage. 8 seconds, cooldown of 20, and it costs a good whack more, okay? And last but not least, winter. Masters of this school of magic summon cold that bites deeper than the cruelest winter. Their icy spells slow and weaken enemies. Alright. So those are the four schools we've got. Winter, Inferno, Storm, and Spirit. And now, it is time to look at many individual spells that we could get. Winter's Grasp. You lock a target in a sheet of ice, freezing it in place. Okay. Uh, fade Step. You let invisible waves of magic carry you forward, blurring ahead a short distance. Hmm. Interesting. Like, uh, I guess that is a mini sprint? It doesn't look like it has a mana cost, so I guess it's like a mini sprint of a sort? I kind of want to get that just for that alone. <laughs> um... Oh yeah, and then they've got upgrades, uh, damages and chills nearby enemies. Uh, 
It looks like there's a second one, but I can't... I can't look at the second one, I don't think. Huh. Uh, this one, passing through enemies hurts them and leaves them chilled for 300% weapon damage. Oh, you can toggle. Uh, each time you pass through an enemy with fade step, you gain mana. Okay, 25% per enemy you go through. That could be cool. Uh, toggle here. Enemies that are already frozen or chilled take massive damage when hit with Winter's Grasp, which is the main thing here. Okay, so if they're already chilled and then you use this, you get... Wait, did that say 1,000% weapon damage? God damn, okay. Uh, mana Surge, passive. Barrier explodes into wild magic when enemies destroy it. The blast freezes all nearby enemies and allows you to cast your next spell without consuming mana. Wow, that's pretty fucking powerful. That is pretty huge, actually, I think. <laughs> pretty sure that's huge. Winter Stillness, by standing still, you enter into a meditative state that restores your mana at an enhanced rate. And reduces all cooldown times. So when you say standing still, does that mean... Because, like, obviously I'm standing still when I'm casting. But does that also mean don't cast? Or does that just mean, like, you can be moving your arms to cast. You just can't be moving your legs. I wonder what that means. Hmm. Uh, Frost Mastery. You have mastered the cooling of cold. Increasing your effectiveness when chilling or freezing targets. Very cool, very cool. Uh, Wall of Ice. You become May from Overwatch. Cool. Uh, create a larger wall. Cast more often... In case is your target inside a ring. Okay. Uh, ice mine. Mark the ground with a glyph that takes a short time to prime. Once it's ready, it will freeze the first target to step on it. Uh, victim of ice mine loses all armor. Create multiple mines directly in front of you. Very cool. Passive ice armor. You draw on cold magic near you to protect you from attack. Standing near a frozen enemy or a persistent cold spell reduces all damage you take by 50%. That's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. And then last in this tree is Blizzard. You summon a freezing blizzard to chill and damage enemies caught in the area. Ice damage 75% of your weapon damage per second. Chill for 8 seconds. Area of effect 8 meters. Okay, cool. So it can be toggled on and off. So it uses 5 mana per second. So it will either stop when you run out of mana or you can toggle it off, I guess. Uh... Chills progressively slowing until they're frozen. Continues without you having to sustain it, but it costs 40 mana to begin with. Okay, that's pretty big, but then it only lasts 10 seconds. Okay, cool. Right, that's the winter tree. Let's have a look at the rest, shall we? What's the upgrades to this? Blistering pain burns brighter and hotter, intensifying the panic. It Fear duration bonus, 8 seconds. So this fear duration is 8 seconds at base, and this isn't telling you the new total. This is telling you the additional amount. It lasts a further 8 seconds. Okay, cool. Uh, enemies panicked by flash fire leave a trail of damaging flames behind them when they run. Eh, that sounds kind of meh. Uh, immolate, you unleash a massive explosion, leaving enemies in the area burning in agony. 300% weapon damage and then burns for 75 per second for 8 seconds. 3 meter range, 16 second cooldown, and only 35 mana. That sounds great. I might get that. Uh, Eldritch Detonator ability. Use on incapacitated foes for a combo. Okay. Uh, this can go to... Uh, immolate burns hotter and has a shorter cooldown. Wow, okay, so that goes to 100% for the fire damage. Uh, oh wait, no. Oh no, it's a bonus 100%. Right, yeah, that's what I just established, is that it's a bonus, not the new total. Uh, and it reduces the cooldown by a lot, that sounds great. No longer has a cooldown, but casting it multiple times in succession costs additional mana. Huh. I mean, they both sound pretty great. What was the cooldown on that? Uh, 16 seconds. That's actually... Yeah, okay. You know what? I am I feel like I'm pretty definitely getting that. That sounds awesome. Uh, flashpoint. After you land a crit, your next spell doesn't trigger a cooldown period. Okay. So you can just cast two things. You can cast the same spell twice in a row. Uh, and you can do that once every 10 seconds. That sounds cool. Uh, but you have to land a crit, which obviously you don't control when you land a crit. Uh, Pyromancer, you've mastered the summoning of fire, increasing your effectiveness when panicking or burning enemies. Solid. Sounds good to have. Uh, clean burn. Your spells burn away ambient magic that would otherwise slow down your casting. Every spell you cast shortens your active cooldown times by one second. Huh. One second is not very much. Like, but, like, if you're casting a lot of different spells, but then you'd need a lot of willpower to be able to cast a lot of different spells to reduce the cooldowns. I'm not sure if that would be particularly good. Uh... Chaotic Focus, when you cast a fire spell, the spell consumes half your current barrier to empower it. The larger the barrier consumed, the greater the bonus to the spell's damage. Huh. Okay. I need... Is there a way for me to... There's probably a barrier spell that I can get, right? So that I can give myself barrier and then cast a fire spell? 
Barrier bonus 50%. Uh, fire mine. You mark the ground with a glyph that takes a short time to prime. Once it's ready, it will erupt into flame, damaging for 1,600%. Jesus. Three second delay when you cast it. 24 second cooldown. Doesn't cost much. Uh, they're launched into the air and set aflame for 200% damage per second for eight seconds. Uh, you can create multiple mines directly in front of you. Okay. Uh, and over here, wall of fire. Flaming barrier that burns and panics enemies that pass through it. 20 seconds. 200% per second. Fear for four seconds. Man, some of these sound really cool. I'm liking the fire tree more than the ice tree so far. Lasting flames. Wall of fire creates a larger wall and flames burn longer. Uh... Begins at your location and moves away from you over the duration of the spell. Huh, that sounds interesting. Okay, I'm definitely in on the Inferno Tree. Liking that, but we will check everything else, of course. So the upgrades to Chain Lightning. Arcing Surge. Chain Lightning arcs farther and hits more targets. Chain Lightning never strikes the same target more than once, but it deals more damage with each new target it reaches. Huh. I don't know which I'd prefer out of those. I wonder if this is an either... This must be an either-or situation, right? You can't get both of these. They do not work together. Well, I guess... I, I guess it could work together. I don't know. I mean, we'd have to see. Uh, maybe, yeah, you can probably get both. You know what? I'm trying shit. Energy Barrage. You launch a salvo of elemental blasts from your staff that hones in on targets ahead of you. Uh, for only 66. That's pretty low compared to everything else we've seen. Uh... Use on incapacitated for a combo, okay. And then upgrade, although 12 projectiles is pretty good, I guess, if they're 66% each. Uh, each hit lowers the target's resistance to your staff's magic type. Cool. Uh, energy barrage now deals additional damage, but all targets are selected at random. Hmm. Don't know how I feel about that. Uh, lightning bolt, summon a bolt of lightning that blasts and paralyzes a single target. If other enemies are nearby, it will paralyze the target for longer. 200% weapon damage. And paralyzes them for two seconds per nearby enemy. Okay, quite a big cost on that one. Uh, does more damage if there's other enemies nearby. And if there are enough close to the striking point, a wave of force will knock back all enemies except for the paralyzed one. Cool. Uh, lightning bolt paralyzes near uh, the more it affects the shorter the duration. Okay, that's a trade-off. Uh, static charge. Sheathe yourself in lightning while casting your spells. Enemies that attempt to interrupt your casting are struck by arcs that leave them paralyzed. Very nice. Um... Did I read this one? Stormbringer. I didn't. The storm comes to your aid even without your calling it. When you're in combat, lightning will periodically strike at a random nearby enemy for 300% damage. That is very nice. That is very nice. Once every 15 seconds-ish. With a huge radius. Huh. That sounds pretty good. Uh, Gathering Storm. Use your staff's energy to fill the area with sympathetic magic. What's that? Each basic attack shortens your active cooldown times. Oh. Each basic attack shortens active cooldown times. Now that is good. Because you can do a fuckload of basic attacks. And finally, static cage. Trap enemies inside an electricity field that paralyzes those that try to leave. Okay. Uh, it's now powerful enough to hurt or even kill enemies who leave. Uh, whenever an enemy takes damage, a lightning bolt strikes them, dealing bonus. Uh, they can now leave, but take constant damage when outside. Okay, cool. And last but not least, we have Spirit. Uh, oh, barrier. You create a shimmering protective barrier that acts as temporary additional health. It decays naturally over time. Okay, that's, I think that's the blue thing I've seen over my, over my health bar. Uh, which, I guess, Solus is casting on me, I suppose? Uh, 1,044, 4 meters, 24 seconds, 50 mana, quite expensive. Uh, a barrier provides an additional health bar that must be destroyed before the target will take any damage. It's vulnerable to dispel. Okay. Uh... Peaceful Aura. Your Aura of Tranquility makes enemies less likely to attack you, even when you damage them. Okay, that's good. Threat reduction, 50%. That's pretty huge. Oh, wait, what are the upgrades here? Uh, you've learned to cast Barrier with a more stable pattern. Each time a Barrier you've cast expires, the ability cooldown is reduced. Okay. Uh, your Barrier holds its full strength for longer before it begins to decay. Okay, that's pretty good. I mean, it's only five seconds, but yeah. Uh, a Protective Barrier springs into place around you automatically when you're badly injured. 100% barrier, once every 60 seconds if you get badly injured. Okay. That sounds very good as well. I'm definitely wanting to get these. I don't know whether I should go... Because so far, winter and lightning sounds like good, but not as good as fire. So I want to go fire, but then this sounds very good for like my survivability kind of thing. Um, mind blasts send enemies staggering with an explosion of willpower that drives them back and makes them less likely to target you again. Okay. 
Uh, each enemy you strike increases your protective barrier as you turn their pain into your power. Very nice. Now use Mind Blast to remove all negative status effects from yourself. Very nice as well. Uh, dispel. Remove hostile magic and status effects while stripping beneficial from your enemies. Okay. Is Dispel what it said? Yeah, barrier is vulnerable to Dispel. Okay, so if enemies have a barrier, then I probably want to get this to fuck them over. Uh, transmute magic. Dispelling increases your own spells, damage, and barrier generation. Cool. Uh, dispel now weakens the magical attacks of effective enemies. Cool. Rejuvenating barrier. When you or your allies have an active barrier, the beneficial energy invigorates them and helps them recover mana or stamina more quickly. Okay. 35% up. That is great. That is very good. Uh, revival. Okay, that's way down the bottom of this tree is a res. Alright. You summon spirits to heal fallen allies in the area, getting them back on their feet and fighting again. Two meter radius. That's actually not very big at all. 60 second cooldown. Okay. And a high, high mana cost. That is, oof, that is expensive. Uh, spirits now protect your allies, reducing incoming damage and reviving them if they fall unconscious for 15 seconds. Oh, that's cool. So if they, because obviously when you revive them, they're not with full health. So then if they take a bunch of damage, they can just immediately die. But for 15 seconds, they will be protected and revived again. That's cool. Uh, it's easier to cast, but no longer revives allies permanently. Instead, allies who are already unconscious fight with great power for a few seconds before falling again. For only 10 seconds, that is not worth. That is definitely not worth. I will never get that one. Uh, strength of Spirits. Your barriers draw on the magic of the Fade to absorb more energy before depleting. Barrier bonus 50%. Huh. So it's like, yeah, your barrier is just 1.5 times better than it would be? Alright. Okay. Lots to think about. There's some really cool sounding stuff in there. I definitely am drawn to the Inferno tree for damage the most and the spirit tree for like self-preservation the most so my question to begin with is what do i want to do first uh i feel like the sensible answer is barrier but the more fun answer is immolate that sounds really good mm. what do we think do we go sensible or do we go good banter Let's go for good banter. Let's go immolate. Uh, oh, and then apply. Cool. Active abilities are automatically assigned to an empty hotkey if one is available. Uh, at any time, you can select a learned ability and press A to map it to a hotkey of your choice. Select the tactics tab from the abilities screen in the character record to, to access a complete list of your learned active abilities. Right. So I've got my flash fire. I've got that. That's damage and puts the fear of God in them. Uh, this is big damage. This is this is the big dick damage, uh, and pretty fast cooldown and pretty low cost. So I'm going to be using this a lot. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to map that to Y and then map this to B. I feel like it's more natural for me to press the Y button, and I'm going to be using that more often. I feel so. It's only got a... Wait, this has got a 20 second cooldown. This has got a 16 and it's more damaging. Yeah, I'm going to be using this more often. Okay. Uh, great. Well, that was a whole lot of menuing. Thank you for sticking with me. Rift is gone. Open the gate. Right away, Lady Cassandra. We are clear for the moment. Well done. Whatever that thing on your hand is, it's useful. Indeed. We going in? Howdy, folks. Uh, refill potions at supply caches. Oh! So you can just permanently have eight potions? It's not like you have to find them or make them. It's you have eight, and then you can refill it up to eight whenever you find one of these. I guess at any sort of base area. Whoa, I, did, I didn't mean to do that. I just meant to back out. Okay. Um, cool. That sounds good. I'm also realizing... So, I think it said... Uh, in fact, let me just read, I'm sure it said, it's probably got it in tutorials, right? Did it say that, like, I don't choose what, uh, Fade Rifts, not that, Tactical Camera, not that, Character Record, uh, no, not that either. What it said about, so I'm not, like, choosing to invest points in my willpower anymore? It's just automatically upgrading, like, health and willpower and stuff when I level, is that right? Hmm. Can I see, uh... 
So I've got tactics there, attributes here. Right, so yeah, like I didn't get a choice over what to put in here. So I guess, I guess it just auto levels you now. I definitely prefer to be able to choose where I put my own levels. So I'm not sure about that necessarily as a change they've made, unless I'm misunderstanding, which I could be, but yeah. Oh God, what is this? The behavior screen allows you to provide instructions to your party on how they should fight, cooperate, and defend themselves in combat. While you directly control and switch between party members, they will follow these rules when you're not controlling them. Oh god. Uh, another time. <laughs> that is the stuff that I do not particularly enjoy. I just want them to work, you know? I just want them to do their thing. Uh, Morning Star. How does that go for uh, Cassandra? Do you like Morning Star? If we compare that to whatever you've currently got, Inquisition Longsword. Uh, yes. That is better, so enjoy. Cool. Ah, here they come. Hello. You made it. Chancellor Roderick, this is... I know who she is. As Grand Chancellor of the Chantry, I hereby order you to take this criminal to Valroyo to face execution. How about you fuck order off? Order me? You are a glorified clerk. A <laughs> bureaucrat. And Banter. you are a thug, but a thug who supposedly serves the Chantry. We serve the most holy, Chancellor. As you well know. Justinia is dead! must elect a replacement and obey her orders on the matter. I mean, there's not really time right now, mate. Uh, I'm standing right here. Don't talk about me like I'm not here. You shouldn't even be here! Cope? Call a retreat, Seeker. Our position here is hopeless. We can stop this before it's too late. How? You won't survive long enough to reach the temple, even with all your soldiers. We must get to the temple. It's the quickest route. But not the safest. Our forces can charge as a distraction while we go through the mountains. We lost contact with an entire squad on that path. It's too risky. Listen to me. Abandon this now, before more lives are lost. How do you think we should proceed? Oh shit! <laughs> uh, you're asking for my opinion? No, you're asking me what I think. You have the mark. And you are the one we must keep alive. Since we cannot agree on our own. Okay, cool. Um... Okay, I like, I like that it comes up with an extra box here. Careful sustained assault. Soldiers will stand with you to ensure arrival, but the scouts in the pass may be lost. Or, fast but indirect. Soldiers will act as a distraction elsewhere. The problem will be addressed sooner, but there may be casualties. Huh. Man, this is, there's no, there's no like, this is the better option. I was thinking like, oh, the scouts in the pass will be lost here, so I'll take the pass and then we'll save them. But this one... Is like, well, there may be casualties elsewhere then. Huh. Well, soldiers are, like, their job is to <laughs> take casualties, essentially. Like, obviously, you hope they don't, but... Whereas scouts, not so much. So if we go to the pass, uh, we can hopefully save the scouts who, like, their job isn't... They, they, they're not signing up to die, <laughs> which soldiers kind of are. So I'd rather save scouts, I think. So we'll take the mountain path. Use the mountain path. Work together. You all know what's at stake. Cassandra disapproved, but Varric approved. Liliana, okay. bring everyone left in the valley. Everyone. Is Leliana not coming with us? On your head be the consequences, Seeker. I want, I want Leliana back in the party. <laughs> Man, I'm really loving how the game looks. Such an upgrade over the previous two. Very nice. Very nice. Can you imagine how good Dreadwolf is going to look? Like, this still looks great, and this was eight years ago. Like, the amount of progress that has been made in technology in eight whole years is insane. 
Dreadwolf is gonna look fucking amazing. Uh, do we just we just got a new codex, okay? Uh, characters, do 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 the dickhead. There are some who claim men have no place in the Chantry beyond the lowest rank of scholarly brothers and those who take their place amongst the Templars. It is not true. This is an organization spanning seven nations, from the smallest village Chantry to the Grand Cath Cathedral in Val Royo. It takes more than sermons to keep it alive. There is an invisible army at work ensuring meals are delivered, repairs are made, and faithful attended to, and much of it is done by Chantry brothers like myself. The position of High Chancellor places a man beside the Most Holy. I control who is permitted audience, handle her correspondence, deliver her word to Thedas, and serve as her advisor on matters which may be mundane, but cannot be disregarded. If I have influence, let it be said it is something I use sparingly, if at all. This is a task to which I devote myself with solemnity. I and my fellows bear a burden so that others are free to guide the spirits of Thedas unencumbered. Okay. I mean, you would say that, but sure. <laughs> Let's pop a cheeky save. All right, so we're going up the ladder. What happens if we walk back this way? Is there anything, or is this just this is just dead end? I guess. Wait, can I like walk off the edge here? <laughs> I'm kind of scared that it might let me actually walk to my death. Let's not try that. The tunnel should be just ahead. The path to the temple lies just beyond it. What manner of tunnel is this? Mine? Part of an old mining complex. These mountains are full of such paths. And your missing soldiers are in there somewhere? Along with whatever has detained them. We shall see soon enough. Hi. Uh, I can't see exactly what you are, but you sure look like an enemy. Let's try out our new skill, shall we? As soon as these guys catch up, I don't want to uh, get into anything without them. Alright, here we go. Boop! Oh, area of effect attacks. Area of effect attacks allow you to target groups of enemies. Use left stick to move the target point for the AoE and press A to initiate when you're happy with its position or B to cancel. Alright. Hello, buddy. How far can you move it? You can move it pretty far, huh? Enjoy. Oh, I don't have enough uh, mana to do that, followed by the lightning. Okay. Okay, no, let's just do it here. Very nice, very nice. All right. It's feeling good. It's feeling good. I'm also noticing that I've got uh, four slots. And then when I change it, I have another four slots. So that is <laughs> immediately much better from the three and three that we had in uh, Origins and two. Definitely like having an additional couple of slots. Going to be very handy. It's pitch black over here. Uh, I assume there's nothing really to collect. Doesn't seem like it. Hello? Anyone home? What be this? Light. Nice. Gold, a dagger, and a griffin shield. Uh, I don't think we have any dagger users, but does... Cassandra want a better shield, potentially? Uh, the Griffin shield. Compared to the Inquisition shield, it has a higher rating. Uh, sounds good. Okay. On you go. Lovely jubbly. Pretty sure no one uses uh, daggers. Right. Your mage. Your Bianca. No. Okay. Wait, what was... Oh, right, no. I was, it looked like I had a melee weapon. It looked like I had a scythe on, but no. It's just <laughs> what this what this uh, staff looks like. Uh, okay, this is pretty big. Oh. Okay, so it makes a little ding if it does hit something. Some kind of crafting mat.
All right, hello, friends. Oh, I'm backing up. <laughs> Let me just back up. Nice. Oh, it did drop something. Okay, so you do have to wait around a bit for them to drop their loot. Know thy enemy. Keep items for later. Okay. Silk. Okay, so this is like crafting stuff? Well, that shit. cannot be all of them. So the others could be holed up ahead. Our priority must be the breach. Unless we seal it soon, no one is safe. I'm leaving that to our elven friend here. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry. I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Oh boy, one of these. Okay. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah. In fact, there are our friends right now. Let's give them a little bit of that. Oh, I can disrupt the rift? Oh, but I need to not be hit while I'm doing that. Okay. Lady Cassandra! Lieutenant! You're alive! What does disrupting it do? Hello. Uh, wait, is there a second one or is, oh, it's over there? Okay, let's just do that. Oh, nice! One punch. I'm not. Oh, clo now I can close it. I'm not sure what disrupting it did necessarily, or whether that was just like a wave mechanic. Before. You are becoming quite proficient at this. Let's hope it works on the big one. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that one up in the sky is a little bit bigger. Thank the maker you finally arrived, Lady Cassandra. I don't think we could have held out much longer. Thank our prisoner, Lieutenant. She insisted we come this way. I did. I'm the glad prisoner. we did. You're welcome. Then you It was worth the risk. It was worth saving you, if we could. Solus is proves very nice. Gratitude. The way into the valley behind us is clear for the moment. Go while you still can. At once. Quickly, let's move. See you around, the okay? Head appears to be clear of demons as well. Let's hurry before that changes. Oh damn, the shield looks really cool on Cassandra, I just noticed. Look at that shit. Down the ladder. That's the oh, that looks the dope. Table. Fire resistance cowl. And hunting longbow. Okay. Could I do with a fire resistance cow? Uh, oh, I keep I keep moving. I keep accidentally moving between characters. Uh, okay, you are never going to move off Bianca, are you? Uh, so I want to go to me, and then I want to go armor. Uh, the cow is significantly better. Okay, yes, give me that. Uh, oh, I can't equip it unless I back out. Oh wait, level six. Shit. Where did it? Where did it say that? Oh, at the bottom there. Well, fuck. Okay. Uh. Sure. Anything over here I can collect? Nope. Okay. Oh my god, it's so sick. <laughs> it's so sick. Oh, yes! Oh, I love the fast ladder slide. Oh, shit. Well, that's unfortunate. Okay, gotta be careful so I don't jump off edges. Accidentally happen, right? If enough magic is brought to bear, it is possible. But there are easier ways to make things explode. That is true. 
We will consider how this happened once the immediate danger is past. Alright, we carry on. We carry on. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh shit. We are actually super close now. Oh fuck a doodle do. Oh my god, this is mad. Look at this. It's just the torn the land. Left of it. That the... is where you walked out of the fade and our soldiers found you. They oh say shit. A woman was in the rift behind you. No one knows who she was. Okay, the Temple of Sacred Ashes rediscovered. Doo -doo -doo, there it is. According to legend, the sacred ashes of Andraste were carried out of the Imperium by Havard, disciple of Our Lady. Wounded by Tevinter soldiers when he tried to stop Andraste's capture, Havard was too late in coming to Minrathus to stop the execution. All he found was her ashes, left out in the elements. As soon as Havard touched them, Andraste appeared in a vision. Rise, she said, Aegis of the Faith. The Maker shall never forget you so long as I remember. The Aegis of the Faith, so named by our prophet herself, stood at her word and found his wounds healed and his spirit renewed. He gathered the ashes of Andraste and returned to the lands of the Alamari tribes, which are now Ferelden. It's said that Andraste's song led him to a holy site, where Havard and his followers built a temple to house her remains. There the legend ends. For centuries, men searched for the Temple of Sacred Ashes, finding only rumours and tall tales. Chantry scholars concluded that there was no temple. There were no sacred ashes. It was all a myth. Allegory, intended to inspire and feed the fire of faith. Then the hero of Ferelden came. Seeking to cure a dying Arl with the miraculous power of the ashes, the hero, with the, renowned help, with the help of renowned scholar brother Ferdinand Genetivi, traced the steps of the ancients and came to a remote ruin high in the Frostback Mountains. There the urn of sacred ashes waited, as the legend said it would. After the triumph of the righteous over the fifth blight, the temple's discovery was shared with the world. Much to our dismay, however, by the time our soldiers arrived at the temple, the urn had disappeared. What? To this day, we do not know who took them or why. All that is certain is that it was the Maker's will. Huh. Okay. Didn't know that. The hero of Ferelden did not share the discovery with the world, and Brother Genetivi, whose research made it possible, had disappeared without a trace. Truth, however, will always out, and rumours circulated about the cause of Al Eamon Gwerin's miraculous recovery. Agents of the Chantry investigated claims about the urn and were eventually led, as the hero had been led, to the temple. By the time the soldiers reached it, the urn was nowhere to be found. I swear that that is not what they said in DA2. I swear we heard about the ashes and people going to the ashes in DA2 after it had been found. But maybe not. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, though the ashes were gone, the temple itself stood and it has since become a source of hope for the faithful. If the Grand Cathedral is a beating heart of our Chantry, then the Temple is her soul. Here we honour the Chantry's past, even as we forge bravely into our future. Uh, what was the tutorial that I just got? Uh, behaviours. Right, yes. I'm sure I'll look at that at some point. Ah, that is unfortunate. Sorry, buddy. That is just mighty unfortunate. What's it pinging? It's pinging something. Oh, it's pinging over there. Nothing around here, it looks like. Oh my goodness, this is going to be bad. Templar helmet. Uh, is it better than what I've got? Yes. And has melee defense. Equip that shit. And then does that mean I can give you a better helmet? Uh, this. Oh, you don't have a helmet. Well, there you go. Now you do. Enjoy.
You're here. Thank the Maker. Liliana, have your men take up positions around the temple. This is your chance to end this. Are you ready? Born ready. <laughs> can I even get up there? I'll try. I'll try. But I don't know if I can reach that, much less close it. No. This rift was the first, and it is the key. Seal it, and perhaps we seal the breach. Okay. Then let's find a way down. And be careful. Find a way down to the rift. Sounds like a plan. Now is the hour of our victory. Bring forth the sacrifice. Uh, what are we hearing? Pardon? <laughs> I guess the person who created the breach. Okay, they have a deep voice. Hello. You know stuff is red lyrium seeker. I see it, Varric. But what's it doing here? Magic could have drawn on Lyrium beneath the temple. Corrupted it. <sighs> it's evil. Whatever you do, don't touch it. Yeah, this is what fucking sent Meredith nuts. Let's have a read, shall we? Not that she wasn't nuts before, but still. To answer your question, my lord, yes, I have indeed heard of this red Lyrium of which you speak. A single piece of it surfaced in the eastern city of Kirkwall, and its influence alone was nearly enough to cause the city's destruction. As near as we can determine, it is regular lyrium that has somehow been corrupted. Those who have touched red lyrium, or even come near it, report that it sings to them, like whispers in the mind that slowly drive them mad. We do not know, however, what might stem from extended contact. Madness, surely. But would there be a physical corruption as well? I mean, we saw that with Meredith, right? What would happen if a mage or a templar used red lyrium as they use regular lyrium? Yeah, don't. <laughs> don't do that. Far more disturbing is the fact that lyrium could be corrupted at all. Treat any red lyrium you encounter as if it were poison. Do not go near it, do not attempt to destroy it, and most importantly, do not attempt to use it. From a partially burned letter by an unknown writer fixed with the Grey Warden seal. Huh. Yeah, I mean, we saw, like, Meredith got completely consumed by it at the end, right? Very interesting. I kind of... I can't. Someone help me! That is divine Justinia's voice. I kind of didn't expect we'd be seeing any more of that. I thought that was like a one and done thing, but maybe not then. Man, this is this gives off very creepy vibes. They've done a great job. It's just the scale of it all as well. Do the thing. Someone help me. What's going on here? That was your voice. Most holy called out to you, but... What's going on here? Run when you can! Warn them! We have an intruder. Man, I love his Lady voice! Elf. Divine, is she? Was this vision true? What are we seeing? I don't remember. Echoes of what happened here. The fade bleeds into this place. This rift is not sealed, but it is closed, albeit temporarily. I believe that with the mark, the rift can be opened, and then sealed properly and safely. However, opening the rift will likely attract attention from the other side. That means demons! Stand ready. All right.
Oh, good. Hello. Now. Oh my god. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that doesn't really give a fuck, does it? Uh. Boom. Boom. Get a load of this. Wait, it's not taking any damage. It's immune. I guess the electricity shield makes it immune to regular, regular stuff. This is not going well. I, oh, I can disrupt it. Ah, it damages demons. Ah, I see. Okay. That's what disrupting does. Okay, cool. Oh, it's still immune to that. I didn't realize. Shit. Can I disrupt it again? No. How about now? Yep. More? We haven't even... Oh, God. Okay, guys. If you could help me with these guys, like, right next to us, that'd be great. immune to that as well. I only have one spell that can actually hurt him. Oh shit, hello. Thanks for the barrier. Appreciate that. I was getting a little bit messed up. Have him. He's almost dead. Sleep well, bitch. Do it. That was cool. I'm really liking the feel of combat in this game. Oh, sick. We actually did it. I was expecting to fail. Or did we? Did we fail? Warriors and rogues generate stamina with each successful attack. Good for them. <laughs> really happy for them. Keep load and load and load and yeah! Oh! We've been taken safely to some kind of rest space. Very nice. Surprise! I know you're awake. I swear. It's all right. Don't worry about it. I only. I beg your forgiveness and your blessing. Uh... I am but a humble servant. You are back in Haven, my lady. They say you saved us. The breach stopped growing, just like the mark on your hand. It's all anyone has talked about for the last three days. Three days, huh? Uh, they're pleased? 
So you're saying they're happy with me? I'm only saying what I heard. I didn't mean anything by it. I'm certain Lady Cassandra would want to know you've wakened. She said, at once. And where is she? In the Chantry, with the Lord Chancellor. At once, she said. All right. Frostback Mountains, discovered Haven. The threat remains. Find Cassandra in the Chantry. Okay. I believe we have a couple of Codex entries. Uh, we got Pride Demon, right? Here we are. The most powerful demons yet encountered are the pride demons, perhaps because they, amongst all their kind, most resemble men, as clever and manipulative as the, as the desire demon, with a penchant for cruel irony that is almost human. While the demons of desire largely engage in the bribery of mortals, pride will use mortals' own best nature against them. Clever men outwit themselves, strong men crush themselves, humble men forget themselves, jealous men fear themselves, they turn corruption and ruin into an art. Very cool. Very cool. I'm. Um, what is the? There's a. In the top right, underneath the three out of sixty-seven, there's two dots. I'm not sure what the two dots means exactly. Hmm. Okay, we've read all the rest of those, haven't we? Uh, down to places. Uh, we have Haven. I would like. To, I would like to speak to you of Haven, the village in the Frostbacks, close to the Temple of Sacred Ashes. We are all aware of its past. It was home to the Disciples of Andraste. Oh, this was the place that we found in DAO, right? Uh, as they called themselves. Descended from the people who built the temple itself, they had strayed, over years of isolation, from their once noble roots to become dragon worshippers. After, oh, yeah, after the hero of Ferelden discovered the Temple of Sacred Ashes, which the di Disciples guarded jealously, what remained of the cult moved on, and Haven was abandoned to the ice and snow. Oops. I passed through Haven on my pilgrimage to see the Temple of Sacred Ashes. There was a storm, and I took shelter in the Hall of Haven's Chantry. Though they were dusty from neglect, the walls of that lonely place were strong and shielded me from the biting winds. Peace came upon me, and my eyes were opened to Haven's incredible beauty. It could not be overcome by the pain and the horror of the past. It could not be masked by decay and disuse. It would not be forgotten. Haven is precious to Orlé, to the Chantry, and to the Sunburst Throne for its historical and religious significance. It is my will that Haven be restored, rededicated to the service of Andraste, and preserved for the ages. Let it be a sanctuary for the pilgrims who seek out the Temple of Sacred Ashes. May they rest here beneath the cold, bright skies. May the glory of the Maker be revealed to them as they gaze upon the grey peaks that are the work of his hand. Now and forevermore, let this be a haven for the faithful. Nice. What have we got here? Patient observations. Vain hope. Someone better at this... Then me takes over before the survivor expires. <laughs> Notes in case. Day one. Clammy. Shallow breathing. Pulse over fast. Not responsive. Pupils dilated. Mage says her scarring mark is thrumming with unknown magic. Wish we could station a Templar in here just in case. Fuck off. Uh, did that... Is there more to it? It said it went into the codex, but is there more to it in there? Uh, what would it be? Notes? Would it be in the notes? One out of 127. I guess it would be in here. Do, 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 do. Yes, and there is no more. Okay. Special shipments. Oh, a star for the dragon, light armor of the dragon, stone bearer armor, and ever. Oh my god. Okay, I guess this is DLC stuff. <laughs> Gonna take a wild guess that that is DLC stuff as part of the game of the year edition. Can I wear any, any of it? Star for the dragon. Uh, I can that. Wow, that is that is pretty good. Well, it's it's a, it's a decent upgrade. Uh, so yes, put that on. Thank you very much. Um, what else did it give me? Uh, I guess armor. Avar armor. Eighty-three armor rating compared to my thirty-eight. Oh my goodness, what? <laughs> Stone bearer armor eighty-four. What is all this? 94? Jesus. Unique heavy armor. This armor is worn by Kunari officers in both the army and navy and signifies a command role. Although in typical Kunari fashion, no one outside the Kun can tell which role is which. Uh, I guess I should just wear the, he the biggest one, right? Hmm. Sure. I mean, I guess it's just, uh, I guess it's just an early boost to your stuff. I'm sure I'll have better stuff than that before long. 
Do do silk valuables shadow essence creature research item. Bring it to a creature research specialist to learn more about it. Okay. Uh, armor schematics avar armor. Okay, you need eight leather and eight metal to make this armor. I guess. Hmm. All right. Uh, do I have anyone else in my party? No, I can't switch characters right now. Okay. When I do, I can give them some of this armor I just got I, as well, I guess. Dawn Lotus and Elf Root. Some common herbs. The good common herb. Anything more to read? No. Okay. That is it. That is where we will leave part one. Here. That is probably the thickest and girthiest part one I've ever done, I feel like. It's definitely up there, if not the highest. Oh, wait. Before we do that, did I just see a little up arrow? I think I did. Yes, I have a point to spend. Okay. Um, do I want to go down to here? After you land a crit, your next spell doesn't trigger a cooldown period. Uh, that is good, but I feel like for my own survivability, I was getting hit a fair bit. I feel like it would be a good idea for me to get me some barrier. That sounds like a good plan. Let's get me some barrier. Uh, and then next, will I go down here to threat reduction, maybe? Or the Guardian Spirit, a free barrier? That's very good. Don't know whether to go down there next or go on to uh, more fire stuff, but we will see. We will see when I next level up. But yes, that is the end of part one. This has been a fantastic intro. Easily, in my opinion, easily the best intro of the three games so far. The the sense of scale of it all, like, straight away, just a big old journey with with people we know as well. It's, like, not just entirely a new cast. They're, it's characters that we already are aware of and have friendships with, in Varric's case and Leliana's case. And just, yeah, oh, man. Really, really cool. Really intriguing setup. Like, what actually happened? What's going on? I, I'm loving it. I'm really loving it. This, is, this has been an excellent start, and I cannot wait to continue. Hope you've enjoyed it as well. If you have, if you could leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Share the videos around if you can. I would really appreciate that. And if you really like what I do here, there is a Patreon link in the description. Anything you could afford to send my way would be hugely helpful with the ongoing running of the channel, the buying of games, all that jazz. I would massively appreciate that. And I will see you next time for more Dragon Age Inquisition. Thanks for watching. See you then.